Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my great watercolor notebook comparison of 2017. I have here five different notebooks and I'm going to be doing watercolor tests in each of them. And in addition to testing the watercolors, I'm going to be testing how different pens sit on the paper and then what happens to these pens when you watercolor on the same side of the page and then on the opposite side of the page. I'll be going into more detail about each specific notebook, but I have first the North Books Notebook 5x8, the Rodia Rodia Rama Soft Cover in A5, all of these notebooks are in A5 size, the Limon Notebook with the dot grid inside, my trusty Leistrom 1917, this particular notebook has a grid but I'll be showing off my dot grid one as well. And then I got the Boho Berry Traveler's Notebook insert. Um, I grabbed that because it has very thick paper and I wanted to see how that held up with the watercolors. Here are the supplies I'm going to be testing in these notebooks. Most important is my Sakura Koi watercolor set. This is just the 12 pack. Uh, and then I just have all the pens here that I use routinely. So these. Faber Castell Pit Artist Pens are quickly becoming my favorite pens. I just got them and I'm so pleased with how they write and how they write specifically with watercolors. I have my trusty Stettler Tri Plus Fine Liners which have not fared well with the watercolors in the past. I have my Pilot G2s which I'm not using as often lately because they do tend to smudge and bleed a little more. I have my mild liners, which I use all the time. You guys know how much I love these. I have my Tombow Fudenosuke pen. I use this for making pretty brush calligraphy headers. My uh, Sakura Micron pens. I have these in 005 and 03. I would like to get some different sizes of those. And then I have my fountain pen. Uh, which I don't expect to do very well with the watercolors, but I thought it was worth a shot. So these are all the pens I'm going to be testing in the notebooks and then watercoloring over them. The first notebook I'm going to be testing is this uh, Le Mom or Le Momé, I'm not sure how to say it. Um, it is an A5, so 5x8, and then it is dotted on the inside. The first thing I noticed is this lovely cover. It's really soft and flexible, and soft cover notebooks were one of the things I was looking at for my traveler's notebook that I plan to start next year because I think they'll work a little bit better in the traveler's notebook if they're soft rather than hardcover. And another reason I picked this notebook was because the paper is very thick. Um, I actually had not really heard of Le Mome or Le Mome, however you say it, as a notebook manufacturer, um, but it came up in my Amazon searches as having really nice thick paper, and so I thought that would do really well with the watercolors. As far as the notebook as a whole goes, it's pretty similar to things like the Leuchtturm. Um, it sits flat, it has a good amount of pages, um, the paper is a little thicker than the Leuchtturm, but other than that, it looks very similar. As far as technical specs go, this notebook has 60 sheets or 120 pages. It has 120 GSM paper, one bookmark ribbon, and it comes in dotted, blanked, ruled, and squared. So for these tests I'm doing, I just clipped out my pages so that they're less likely to buckle when I watercolor on them. And then I'm going to go through with each of my pens and write down which pen they are. And then also do a little bit of scribbling and writing below so that I have different uh, numbers of layers of ink on the page. I found that some pens will work just fine with one layer. Others, once you do two layers, they start to bleed, things like that. Uh, once I do all my pens, I'm going to do them again on the other side, and then at the end I'm going to watercolor on the back side of the page. So on the top I'll be watercoloring with pen on the opposite side of the page, 
And then on the bottom, I'll be watercoloring directly on top of the ink so that I can see what happens in both situations. Now I'm going to let the time lapse play and come back at the end to talk about the results. Now that I've got all the pens on the page, I'm going to have a look at them before I do the watercolors and see how they held up. There is almost no ghosting, and in some cases where I did very thick layers of ink you can see them a little bit, but for the most part this uh, level of ghosting is much better than what you typically, typically get with something like Aloy Sturm 1917. So if ghosting is something that bothers you, then this notebook would probably be a good choice. One thing to be aware of is that some of the pens had the tiniest amount of feathering uh, when I wrote with them. Um, the Stuttler Triplus Fineliners are probably the most visible example of this in the video, but it is very slight. I don't notice any feathering with the Pilot G2, the Micron, or the Mild Liners. The next step of this test is to go and watercolor over this page, so the top will be over the pen on the opposite side, and the bottom obviously will be over the ink directly. The very first thing I noticed was that the Stettlers did not bleed through from the opposite side like they did in the Leuchterm. In fact, none of the pens bled through from the other side except in the case where I watercolored directly over them, as you can see here, where the ink did leak through a little bit on certain pens. So all of these pens will work on the opposite side of a page that's being watercolored but the ones that did not do as well being watercolored directly over were the Pilot G2, the Stettler Triples Fineliners, the Mildliners, and the Pilot Metropolitan with the Coral Lamy ink. This is not particularly surprising because this is essentially the same results I got when I painted over pens in the Leuchterm watercolor video. 
The next notebook I got to test with the watercolors were the North Books. I grabbed a very thin uh, soft cover insert and then I also grabbed a hardcover North Books notebook and I actually did not realize until stacking all the notebooks up like this that they're much thinner. Uh, they're not the same A5 size as the other notebooks. They are actually just 5x8 instead of the 5.8x8.3 that I think I am used to. Like the Lois charm that I'm using right now. For this reason, I don't think I'll end up using them in my final Traveler's Notebook, but I thought I would continue the test anyway. So here's the Northbook's hardcover notebook. It's pretty standard, has their logo on the back, it has this nice solid cover. As I mentioned, it is slightly narrower than the Lois Charm and other A5 notebooks. If we open it up here, we can see the little title page and then it gets right into the dot grid inside. This has 192 pages of 90 GSM paper, so it is slightly thinner than the Lois Charm, but not as thick as the Limome notebook. It also lays flat if you give it a little bit of convincing, and it has one ribbon bookmark. The pages are slightly rounded, which I think looks nice, but it's not quite enough to convince me to use a notebook with such a narrower pages. Overall, the paper feels nice. It has um, subtle dot grids, they're not too dark. And I just think that this would be a fine notebook if you don't mind that it's a little bit thinner. There's also an interesting thing happening here where there's a little indent in the middle of the notebook where the bookmark was placed. I'm not sure what this is from, but if that's something that's going to bother you, maybe choose a different notebook. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the Limome notebook, and I'm going to come back after I have all of my pens in the notebook for testing. I chose to forego the fountain pen for this one because after the first test I think we can safely assume that we're never going to be able to watercolor over that pen. It smudged so badly that it looked like it was just more paint. The ghosting in this notebook is of quite a bit more noticeable. I wouldn't say this is worse than the Lois Charm. It does have slightly thicker paper so that makes sense to me. Um, you can see where I did the darker squares of ink, they show through the page pretty clearly. It's not as noticeable in the video as it is in person. So if ghosting is one of your pet peeves, uh, you should probably choose a notebook with thicker paper like the Limome. If you are planning on using mostly ink and no watercolors, I did not notice any feathering. So this may be a better notebook choice for people who don't plan to watercolor in their bullet journals. Now I'm going to do the same watercolor test that I did before. This time I actually remembered to put a paper towel behind the page so that it doesn't get on the surrounding pages. Right off the bat, we can see that the Stettler Tri Plus Fineliners leaked right through when the opposite side of the page was watercolored. This is exactly what happened in the Loistrum 1917 and one of the things that prompted me to make this video. 
Fortunately, it does look like the other pens all handled the opposite side watercolor page uh, just fine, so those would all be usable in a bullet journal if you plan on watercoloring most of the pages. If we look at the pens that were watercolored directly on top, the Stettler Triplus Fineliner is the only one that really had any problems. The mild liners, which typically faded quite a bit and bled through, um, they actually were mostly fine. Um, I did use yellow here, perhaps if I used a darker color it would have been worse. Similarly, with the Pilot G2, we have the tiniest amount of smearing, but it looks much better than I remember it looking in the Limon notebook. If we flip to the other side of the page, we do see a little bit of bleed through on the pens we watercolor directly on top of. Um, the Stettler Triplus Fineliners, the Model Liners, and the Pilot G2 are the only ones with noticeable bleeding from that. Next, we have the Rhodia Rhodia Rama Soft Cover Notebook. Um, this is an A5 size and it is the wider 5.8 by 8.3. Since it does have a glued spine, we need to be careful not to get water on the spine of the notebook because it can eat away at the glue. Uh, I still have the wrapper on here so we can see all the specs right here. Uh, like I said, it's a soft color cover. It has 80 sheets of dark gray paper a ribbon bookmark, a pocket, and 90 GSM uh, paper, and I actually have not opened this yet. I just took the plastic wrapping off. Um, it has a nice feel. I like the soft cover notebooks, and since I'm going to be putting these in a traveler's notebook and the soft covers are usually thinner than the hard covers, um, that's why I had a kind of a focus of exploring soft cover notebooks uh, this time around. Uh, one thing I notice is that the soft covers do take a little bit more convincing to lay flat. Um, I'm guessing this is probably due to how they're bound. They just don't lay flat quite as naturally as the hard covers. And, and that's okay. Um, if I press down on the middle here, it does lay fairly flat. Flipping through, the pages do feel very nice. They feel pretty thin, uh, so I'm a little concerned about how well they will take watercolors, uh, but that's what the tests are for. The dots are a little darker than I'd like, but we'll see how it looks once I actually get things written down. And that's pretty much it. I can keep looking and touching and moving around the notebook, but I think we should just get started with the watercolor test. The process is exactly the same as with the previous notebooks. I'm going to put down all the pens that I have using varying amounts of ink and different shapes, and then I'm going to watercolor over the back side of the page to see how the pens hold up on this paper. Okay, as far as just the pen on paper goes, the Rhodia notebook does have quite a bit of ghosting. I don't think it's quite as bad as the Germ 1917, which is, you know, the standard bold journaling notebook. Uh, but as you tilt the page, you can definitely see the squares and the lines and the words that I wrote on the other side. So again, uh, if ghosting is really going to bother you, you may want to go with much thicker paper than you're typically going to have in a standard bullet journaling notebook. Now looking at the pens up close here, 
I do not see any feathering. As far as ink goes, this notebook is very good for writing in with different kinds of ink. All of these pens look great on this paper. It was very smooth. Uh, the pages felt very smooth and it also writes very smooth. Overall, if you plan on mostly using ink and not watercolors as much, the Rodia Rodiorama softcover notebook would be an excellent choice. As for watercoloring, we will find out how well it does that next. Starting at the top, um, the watercolors did not pull the Stetler fine liners through like they did in the other notebooks. There's no bleed through that I can see in this part of the watercolor test. There is a fair bit of wrinkling. Part of that could be because I forgot to clamp down the pages until about halfway through. Um, there is a little bit of ghosting here, uh, but I do not think it is actual bleed through. It's very hard to tell. Um, but it looks like the Stetler Fineliners and the Pilot G2 had this problem the worst. Moving down to the watercolors on top of the ink, the Pilot G2, I started with a pink color and the black just bled out into the, into the watercolor paint, turning it gray. And the Stetler Triplus Fineliners did also bleed out into the watercolor paints pretty badly too. And then we have our mild liners, which always sort of fade away when they're watercolored on top of. That's pretty typical, we're, we're used to that, we're expecting that. Um, there's not much the paper can do uh, on the ink side of the page, but I did notice that the Pilot G2s were not quite as bleedy in some of them, so maybe the paper sucked in more of that pigment. The ink on the side of the page opposite the watercoloring was not affected at all. In some of the notebooks we did see a little teeny bit of, um, I'm not sure if it's bleed through, it would kind of smudge the ink on the other side. And the bleed through on the bottom is not as bad as it was in other watercolor tests, but it is still present. The Stetler fineliners were the worst, um, so we're seeing kind of a pattern there. Stetler fineliners, while beautiful, are not very compatible with watercoloring, which saddens my heart, um, but perhaps I can find a new set of colored fine liners that will work in their place. Overall, I think as long as you're aware of your pens and how compatible they are with watercolors, the Rodia Rodiorama softcover notebook is a fine choice as a watercolor bullet journal. Next is the Leuchtturm 1917. Uh, this is my everyday bullet journal. It is the A5 in dotted. I don't know what the color name is. It might be Nordic blue, it might be aqua, something like that. I have watercolored in this one a little bit. Um, here are some of the spreads that I've watercolored. You can see I wrote just fine on top of all this. The pages are slightly wrinkled, but ultimately it doesn't bother me. And I've also done heavy ink with watercolor over the top of it and that held up just fine. I have some other watercolor pages. I pretty much watercolored most of November because I was so excited. Looking at some blank pages, of which I have very few because I'm so close to the end, you can see it has the nice cream paper, the pages feel nice, they, they don't feel particularly thick, um, but as you can see the watercolors hold up just fine on them. Um, I'm going to pull out my other notebook and we're going to look at the actual test I did in my previous YouTube video. This is also a Leuchtturm 1917 in black, A5 size. This one has a grid instead of the dot grid. This was my first bullet journal and since I didn't fill it up, I use it for testing things out. Um, so here we have all of the pens I tested in my previous YouTube video. I have the Uniball Vision in this one, but it was so bleedy and inky, I just didn't really want to use it anywhere else. 
Um, and we can see that the bleed through was pretty bad with the Stettlers, the Pilot, and then that Uni Ball Vision. Uh, my fountain pen also bled through quite a bit. I think I'm just going to have to avoid using that on watercolor notebooks. It just bleeds through a little too much. Um, the watercolor on top of the pens is what we'd expect. Pilot G2, Stettler, Uniball Vision, and the fountain pen with the Lamy ink all smudged way too much. They bl bled into the water once it was put down on the page. And then they also bled through this side of the page fairly badly as well. So while I would recommend a Leuchtturm for watercoloring in as a bullet journal, I would steer clear of these particular types of pens. They're just gonna make these unsightly little bleed through marks unless you're very, very careful. As I mentioned, it does wrinkle the pages a bit. It is a little bit worse than it appears in the video, but it's still not bad enough to bother me as I'm flipping through my notebook. Um, I watercolored almost all of November, and while the pages do feel a little bit crispier, um, otherwise I write on them and I use them just as I would any other notebook. Last but not least is the Boho Berry Papery Traveler's Notebook Insert. Since it is an insert, it has the smallest number of pages with only 40 pages. It has about the same number of dots as the Loisterm 1917, they're 5 millimeters apart. And the paper is incredibly thick, it has 148 GSM paper. So this notebook as a whole is very stiff, despite being so thin. Uh, and the paper feels very solid, um, you know, very durable to me. I did have some difficulty getting the notebook to lay flat since it is staple bound and not sewn. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem, especially if I'm having this in a traveler's notebook. Nothing's really going to lay perfectly flat, but it is something to keep in mind if you're looking at this notebook for yourself. It's a little difficult to flip through the pages like this just because they are so thick and the pages don't line up perfectly straight when the notebook is closed. This notebook also has very white paper. It's, it's like a pure bright white and then the dots, you may not be able to tell from the video, are a teal color. Um, I have yet to write anything in this notebook, so I'm not sure how dark they are once you actually get, get things written down, but I think the teal is a little bit less in your face than the typical gray. I'll commence the pen test now. You all know how this works. I'll come back when I'm done and talk about the results. This paper does take pen very well. Um, I did notice the tiniest amount of feathering, uh, particularly with the Tombow Fudenosuke pen. Um, if you're looking at this notebook from like a normal distance, you can't really see it and it may not show up on the video, um, but it is very, very slight, uh, much like the Limom notebook and the feathering that was in there. There is no ghosting at all. Like you cannot see through this paper at all. It is perfectly clear white on the other side. Um, you know, I tilted this in all directions. I could not see any of the pen marks through the page. Um, so this is the perfect notebook if ghosting is your, your big weakness. 
Next up is the watercolor test. Same thing as always, I'll come back when I'm done. Much to my surprise, this notebook did not take watercolors well at all. So paper thickness is not the only thing to take into consideration when you're thinking about watercoloring. The pens bled through in really odd ways. Um, like you can see the Pilot G2, the lighter color here, kind of dissolved. Um, and the Stetler Triplus Fineliners didn't bleed like they typically do, but they did sink through the page when I watercolored over them. On the other side of the page, you can see we got some actual watercolor paints bleeding through the paper. This did not happen in any of the other notebooks. We only got pen bleed through, um, so that is specific to this notebook. On the bottom, we also have the Pilot G2s bled almost completely through the page. And then the mild liners bled through, and the stellar fine liners bled through as well. Overall, this notebook had some really odd reactions to the watercolors. I would not recommend this notebook for watercolor bullet journaling at all. Um, there are a lot of other options that will work better for you. But if you love ink, this may be the best notebook for actual writing. To recap, the Limon notebook, I think, took watercolors the best. The page had the least wrinkling and almost no bleed through. The Rhodia is second, and this is because the bleed through was very minor, and even though the pages did wrinkle quite a bit. The Loistrum 1917 can be used for watercoloring if you are careful about which pens you are using in the notebook. Stetlers and more inky pens will bleed through. The Boho Berry insert worked excellent for writing in but did not fare very well during the watercolor tests and then finally we have the north books notebook it did fine in terms of watercoloring on top of pens but there was significant bleed through and i didn't like the thinner pages that wraps up this video i hope this helped you choose your notebooks for 2018 whether you're using a traveler's notebook or if you just want to do a good old one notebook bullet journal um, I think I know what I'm going to pick, but I'm going to do a little bit more thinking on it before I commit to anything. Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Um, I may do another one next year once I have a better collection of pens and have a little bit more flexibility in what I'm able to test. So I hope you have an excellent day and happy bullet journaling.